Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to talk about the Imperial Night stuff. And this is going to be almost a two part thing whereby right now I'm going to talk about how much I'm looking forward to the Imperial Night stuff because I am a, uh, uh, well, I'm a massive consumer whore and the Imperial Knight stuff gets me uh, wetter than an otter's pocket. It just looks really, really good. They look ridiculously over the top. They they fulfill all of the things I love about 40k the most. Impractical weapon systems, oversized mechs that really, let's face it, make no logistical sense whatsoever. It's all my favorite stuff. It's over the top lunacy, uh, just purely for the hell of it. I I love Imperial Knights for exactly that reason. They are absurd, they are the best part of Warhammer 40k because they are absurd. Um, so this video, I'm just we're just going to take a look at what's been revealed so far, um, talk about how actually it kind of looks like we might get some genuinely interesting stuff out of it, which is a bonus, which is a plus out of new releases, and then there will be another video, most likely today as well, where I'm going to complain about the fact that we're getting more Imperial Knights, which might seem a little bit odd, but... Even as I look at this stuff and a small string of drool goes slowly from one corner of my mouth and I have to lament the fact that savings are nice and why can't I have any? Oh wait, it's because I keep buying stuff. Um, at the same time, I have to be honest and say that the, the Harlequin stuff, one of the reasons that that didn't get as much coverage on this channel was partially because I wasn't feeling great at the time, but also because... I'm kind of getting, even as someone who does not own a Xenos army, a little bit fed up of the way the, the, the kind of release cycle is going. There's no new stuff. Yeah, there's a codex, yes, there are rule changes, there are, you know, chapter tactic equivalents and whatever, but there's nothing meaty, there's no new models, there's no new big releases, I mean... Much though I'm excited for Imperial Knights, and I am, I'm also sitting here kind of thinking to myself, you know, even as someone who has mostly Imperium stuff, and 99% Imperium stuff, would it not be nice to get, to get s something, anything? So, what we're going to do first is take a quick look at, uh, first we're going to take a very quick look at Sir, Sir, Hec Sir Hector whose name I could not pronounce for about a minute after first reading it because there's an H in there that I was not expecting. Um, we'll just take a quick look at him because, oh dear lord, uh, that is Sir Hector right there, taking his lunch to work, good man, um, and that is his knight, the Canis Rex, and it looks ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that is a new faceplate for the knight. I don't think that is one that we've seen before. I could be completely incorrect. Um, I I just went for the uh, I went for the I was going to say the other one, but there's like five of them. I went for a for a very specific one on my knight because it's the only one out of them that I actually like. Um, but there is a very interesting weapon right there. The first I thought was a conversion beamer, but I'm not entirely certain, I'm not going to lie. It feels conversion beamery, but it's also uh, significantly massive, and there's something about the styling of it that I I don't know. It also reminds me of that Hellfrost thing that the, uh, the Space Wolves get to. What it is actually going to be, we don't know, it doesn't say in the article. But I will say that as a as a start to the night releases, uh, an actual special character is a good way to go. I like that. I like giving them a bit more personality, giving them their own hero. It's a good move, and it helps that that is a a nice looking knight. Um, I really want to know more about the weapon. Also, the dude, if the knight is destroyed, can run around shooting stuff with his archaeotech pistol. So. Don't worry, when Hector's knight is inevitably annihilated by something, he can wander around and shoot stuff instead. Uh, it's just not going to be anywhere near as effective because, well, it's just a dude with a pistol. But that's a great start, and that got me excited. I was like, okay, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be bothered by this. I thought I'd be a little bit excited, if only to see what people do with them. But I have enough ridiculous projects going on of my own to get stuck into some sort of Imperial Knight army, that would be ridiculous, they're incredibly expensive, that would be ludicrous, don't do that. And then I saw that and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe even if it's just for having, because I really liked assembling and painting my knight, 
maybe maybe I could get away with just one, which is of course the the, the terrible the terrible slippery slope that is Games Workshop. Just one model. You can never do just one. It always ends up being like eight of the damn things, no matter how expensive they are. Um, and then they showed the 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 preview of the previews, so to speak, where we got to see the uh, <laughs> the Knight Castellan and the Knight Valiant, and there's the Armager bloody <sighs> there's the Armager Warglaves, and now there's the Armager Helverins. How how do you come up with Helverin and Warglave for the Knight? But the Primaris plasma gun dudes are hell blasters. I mean, Helverin sounds great. I don't know what it actually means, but it sounds a damn sight better than Hell Blaster. I think they were having some sort of imagination block when they were doing when they were doing the Primaris stuff. And somehow the knights have come out with all the best, you know, to come out with all the best names. You've got the Warden and the Crusader, and you've got the Knight Castellan and the Knight Valiant, and you've got Armage of Warglaves and Armage of Helverins and um, the, the the big ones are the Dominus class knights, which look uh, suitably ridiculous and over the top. Um, I mean, I, I just, I love this. Look at it. Oh, hang on, let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. That is absurd. I love how stupid that is. <laughs> it's so, it's so immensely impractical and dumb. I mean, is that too many battle cannons on the top of that thing? Because that's what it looks like to me. That is what that looks like. Tell me I'm not alone in thinking that looks like two mini battle cannons on the top of that knight. Missiles. I, I love the use of these things um, for the far future thing that 40k is. I don't think actual missiles get enough love, if I'm honest. Um, it's all about battle cannons and shit, and seeing those on there, it kind of it makes it look actually slightly futuristic. Which, I know you're going to sit there and go, what do you mean it doesn't look futuristic? It's a big robot. Yeah, but it's it has a certain styling to it, and it has a certain over the top element that kind of just it just looks so it looks so excessive, and I love that. So we've got four of these, whatever those missiles turn out to be, whether they're some sort of hunter killer variant or something, I don't know. What that looks like, two miniature battle cannons on the top. I'm really interested to know what those actually turn out to be. Two multi melters. Do we reckon there? Whatever the fuck that is, a giant inferno flamer. I'm assuming oh, it's got to have the name inferno in there somewhere. I'm guessing, and um, an Ursus claw, <laughs> which is nice. I'm not entirely sure how how that's come about, but I'm loving the addition of the Ursus claw. That was also a rumor engine thing as well. The chains and that part of the uh, that part of the gun was a rumor engine thing ages ago, ages ago now. Um, but yeah, I. Again, I want to see the rules for that because that could be that could be genuinely interesting if we are introducing rules whereby this thing could shoot at a vehicle and pull it towards it. That would be quality. Um, I, as I say, no idea whether that would turn out to be actually a thing that is possible, but I would hope that it is because it is what looks to be a harpoon with extendable things on it with chains coming out of it. That is what you would expect from that. I would really like that to be the case. Um, yeah, I, I just, I cannot help but be a little bit excited about the armaments on this thing because they are so, so silly. And it's my favorite thing. It's my absolute favorite thing. Um, there's also, <laughs> again, it makes me happy. More, more battle cannons. Whatever, again, whatever that is, another massive battle cannon, a giant plasma thing on one side there. It's just, they look ridiculously good. They look really excessive, really over the top. They are bristling with guns. What more do you want? From a slightly larger Imperial Knight, what more do you want than that? I kind of like the way there is the distinction as well between this this larger knight, the, uh, the Dominus class, and the older ones, because it's it's kind of it's not just in the guns, you know. There's there's a definite change in silhouette, which I really like. One of the things I really liked about the introduction of the armages is that Imperial Knight armies, if you're just running Imperial Knights, the silhouettes are all very similar, and I like having that kind of variation from a distance, whereby you know you can look and you can see a nice 
you know, a nice number of units and you can tell that there's something different. Um, this again is fulfilling that role really nicely. Um, and we've got we've got ridiculous new weapons. I don't know what they do, but I want to know. So those look ridiculous. The uh, the Helverins as well. See, these are more these are more interesting to me than the Warglaves were, because I I kind of felt like when I first saw these, I expected some sort of kind of longer range version of them, just because it made more sense to me. It didn't make a huge amount of sense having smaller, weaker, more lightly armoured knights getting in ahead and kind of just getting in the way, if that makes sense, especially when you consider how much firepower the larger knights have already before we had the larger, larger knights. Um, actually having some that are longer ranged, to me that just makes a bit more sense, it makes them a bit more plausible. And I will say I kind of I do quite like the look of them. It's saying auto cannon of some description to me, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. But I do much prefer the 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 kind of that loadout just says more to me than the one that was in the Forge Bane box. Something that is really interesting as well, by the way, that I really hope they expand on um, is this. So data sheet cards. So like in they just quick reference things. So they, they say here um, that there you know there's data cards for keeping track of stratagems, and there's a set of data sheets for referencing your units on the go. That I really like the idea of that, and I hope that that gets moved over to um, other armies as well. Uh, just having a quick reference card, I think is a is a really good idea. I don't know why it's not being done more widely already, but that is something I can absolutely get behind. Given how much given how much crap you have to lug around a lot of the time, having something that is quick and portable and easy, and you might not necessarily need to just bring the entire codex, you could just bring you know the cards for the units you have, as opposed to lugging the entire thing around with you. I, I prefer that. I much prefer that since yeah, just it, it just makes sense to me. It makes sense having that option to have a, a, a lighter load when travelling with your army, I guess. Especially if you don't intend to change out your your force if you're going, you know, specifically with these are the units I've got, this is what the build has, this is what I can field. Oh, I'll, I'll just take the stuff that's relevant to this. I like that, I much prefer that. Um so yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they implement that for other stuff as well. I hope they do. Um, there is also the return of Imperial Knight Renegade, which, that was a ridiculous deal. That was a crazy deal. I'm pretty sure that when that first came out, that was like 120, was it 120 quid for two nights? Which is mental. And now it is coming back, and it seems to be that the saving will be kind of more it may cost more i would I'd be surprised if it cost the same i would expect renegade to cost a little bit more now because you have that that like sector mechanicus thing in the middle there um so it looks like the scenery is different probably a bit of an upgrade if i'm honest and as far as i'm aware the first version of imperial knights renegade had a it just had the standard knight kits before they were expanded out into being able to build, I think it's the Warden and the Crusader and the other one, before basically you had the weapons on top. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong about that, but I'm I'm like 90% sure that the knights you got in that original one did not have those, those carapace options because those carapace options didn't exist when it was made. Um, so that that hopefully is going to be a ridiculously good deal and ho i'm really hoping they don't make it a limited run thing i'm hoping they just continue with it because it's a really good way to get people in and frankly if that is reasonable i could easily see people doing what i <laughs> i fully intend on doing depending on the price of it which is picking one up because i want the two knights and selling the scenery you know, I, I, I would absolutely do that in a heartbeat. I've already got a knight over there fully assembled. Grabbing two more for significantly less than buying them separately and then selling part of the scenery off to cover the cost since I've already got a decent amount of scenery. That is a very tempting thing. Very tempting indeed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got high hopes for that sticking around and being nice and reasonable in terms of cost. Um, the other thing as well, which I'll just double check, but I'm pretty sure that there are going to be nine um nine households 
so that'll be the equivalent of the chapter tactics which yeah that's quite a lot that's a, that's a fair <laughs> that's a fair amount um so uh, there'll be a lot to choose from i'm kind of given how unique the imperial knights are in terms of their in terms of their composition as a as an individual army i would kind of hope to see some interesting like interesting stratagems and interesting kind of chapter tactic equivalents i'd really like to see something that is more reflective of their their composition I suspect we're going to see repeats of stuff we've seen before, just because that is kind of inevitable at this point. But I don't know. It would be nice to see something a little bit different, and this would be the time to try something new. I mean, I, I feel like Imperial Knights are kind of unique in that sense. So if you're gonna mess around a little bit, doing it with an army as as different as as knights are, would kind of be the time to do it. I think. So yeah, I, I have to admit, I was I was all prepared to be like, oh, that's cool if people like them, but I'm not too bothered. <sighs> it's just... They, they, they've, they've won me over really badly. <laughs> they've won me over really badly because I really enjoy putting my knights together. It's, it's easily my favourite kit that I've ever assembled. Um, and that's saying something. Because I've... Given how much I like kit bashing, I didn't even particularly feel the urge to kit bash that night just because I was like, oh, this is such a great kit. This is really fun. I'm really enjoying this. I also, once I got into the swing of it, really enjoyed painting it more so than any other vehicle I've ever painted. Um, and I would happily do it over and over again. Combine that with actual variants of the armages that I quite like the look of now and the bigger knights and the possibility of getting two knights for a significant discount with renegades and it's it's doing a number on my self-control I'll put it that way I'm kind of excited I'm definitely excited question is what do you reckon are you, I mean are you looking forward to this stuff or are you just a bit sick of, of Imperium based stuff now because that is a I guess that's the cognitive dissonance part of the uh, the other video that will hopefully be up today, which is that I'm really looking forward to this, but at the same time, I also just feel like I want something a little new that isn't Imperium based. It's weird, but yeah, we'll we'll talk about it in the other video. Um, yeah, I, I, are you going to be grabbing any of this stuff? Or are you or are you just going to resist, <laughs> or are you just not bothered? Are they just not your thing? Because that is also fair enough. I think they're. I think they're a bit of an acquired taste, the knights, to be honest. They're very they're very over the top, they're very excessive. And they're a bit I, th I feel like they're a little bit daunting in terms of um kind of assembly and painting, if I'm honest. I was definitely a bit sort of daunted by mine. But yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to click any of the things, Patreon, subscribe, videos, all that shit. Click if you like, don't click if you don't want to, no one's forcing you. And uh, I will see you for the next one. Toodaloo.